So guys, here's a prophetic word that the Lord gave to me. I was going along my evening, getting ready to do some other things, and this kept, I kept hearing this in my spirit. She's preaching in the pulpit, but she's cursing out her husband at home. She's preaching, she's preaching and teaching in the pulpit, but at home she's cursing out and disrespecting her husband. So guys, I was like, okay, and kept going on about my day. And guys, it came again. So I'm going to read you Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to start at 22. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. That's why you must be careful who you say I do to. Because whether he's saved or not, you're making him your head. So for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as a church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, not some things, ladies, but in everything. And keyword is your own husband. That's the second time in the same scripture we're hearing your own husband. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this man shall a wife, shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So first and foremost, before I give this word, I am not telling anyone that they're supposed to be subject, whether husband, wife, male or female, to be subject to any abuse, physical, emotional, sexual. I am not condoning anything of that nature. Everyone has different situations. And in some cases, people are being abused or in dangerous situations. I always tell people, dial 911 get help let people in so they can help you flee if you must especially if you're in danger and your children are in danger that's for man woman husband wife i want to something in my spirit too is leaving a window here of I'm not going to call it grace, but I know what to call it because sometimes what happens is you have people who mistreat and really, really mistreat a person, a person that's normally patient and kind and loving, and they mistreat that person to the point that that person snaps off and gets so angry. They may say something, they may act in a certain way in a moment, and you know, that's looked at as, oh, this is a horrible husband or a horrible wife. And while there may still be consequences for these actions, God is not blind to the fact that there's certain things that you are doing to that man or to that woman that's normally very kind and very patient and long-suffering, in which now they're acting out of sorts. And some people take this opportunity and take that platform as a means to run and say, oh, look what he did, look what she did, 
when in fact you have been driving like a sword through them for so long that they finally just just lost themselves and you find that as an opportunity to run and say oh my husband and my wife is a horrible person and look what they've done while cloaking yourself in innocence and again i'm not here to say it's right i'm not here to say that there won't be consequences that will ensue for some of the things that they do in a moment of anger but what makes it wrong is that you know what you've been doing to him or her all this time okay i don't know where that came from god has just put that in here here is the word of the lord that he has given me today somebody some women are on a platform where they're preaching and they are teaching and god is saying you are wrong 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 not for teaching and preaching as a woman but because you are preaching and teaching and standing for the standing before his people while you are being a rebellious wife at home while you are being a disrespectful wife at home to your husband while you are withholding sex from your husband not because he's been out the house not because of uh anything you know you're fasting or whatever the case may be as a matter of fact god is putting that in my spirit that some of you are doing these things where you're withholding yourself and you're saying for the purpose of fasting but even in the purpose of fasting the word of god says you're both supposed to as christians okay i'm not talking about unsafe folks as christian believers the word says that you're supposed to talk to, to talk to one another let the, each other know that you're on a fast and it's for a certain period of time. You're not supposed to deny one another lest you give room for the devil to operate. But there are women, you are, you, what you're doing, uh, uh, woman of God, you are saying you are fasting, but what it is, you don't, you just don't want him. So you're being manipulative and then you're using the gospel and, and, and the word of God to justify what you're doing because you don't want him. You don't want him. As a matter of fact, my God, as I'm talking, guys, I'm seeing like even you, you, some of you, I see that you masturbate, you do certain things. So to satisfy your needs and your urge because you are so put off by him. You just don't want him anymore. So you are mistreating your husband. You're doing these things in the house. I'm not talking about you that you have an abusive husband. You have this bad husband and you have this terrible husband. I'm talking about you, woman of God, that you have reached this place that you are up front and you're preaching and you're teaching, but you've got to this place where you are... You don't see him as the head for whatever reasons, because God is using you. You don't see him as the head and you're very disrespectful to your husband at home. You're denying him sexually. You are loud and stubborn at home. You override his authority at home with the children and your children are a witness of this. You downgrade him, you shame him, you feel because you have this entourage around you that you don't need him and you feel like God has called you and not him. But I'm here to tell you that he is still the head of the household. You married him, your husband is a man of God. You, you are not the head of the house. He is the head of the house and you are out of order. You are out of order. And if you're out of order at home, you cannot be in the house of the Lord teaching and preaching. You're out of order in the house of the Lord because you're out of order in your home. You're out of order because you are walking against the word. You are going against the word of God. You are in absolute disobedience to God. You are absolutely disrespectful to God. You are showing your children something that is opposite to the word of God, where it tells children to obey their parents. Well, it's going to be hard for children to obey their parents in the Lord. According to Ephesians 6, honor thy mother and father, 
which is the first commandment with promise, it is very hard for them to honor someone that you downgrade and you downplay. So you are in another area of absolute error. You are rebellious. You are a rebellious wife. And just as Vashti had to be removed, God is going to remove you from your position in the ministry until you fix your household. Your ministry is going to come to an end as long as you dishonor the head at home. You may have your reasons. You may say, oh, you don't know me, but I'm talking to you. God is saying Whatever it is, it does not give you the right to dishonor your husband at home. And in terms of submit to your own husband, you find yourself submitting more to the men in the leadership in the church. And you are sharing your heart and you are in error again by uncovering your husband's nakedness to these leaders specifically i see a specific man that you are fond of you are very fond of and you're telling him things and he's telling you things about his wife god is going to remove your platform your ministry will be no more as long as you dishonor your husband because you're preaching but you're cursing at home, which makes you a hypocrite. You're double-minded and you're unstable and God is not gonna allow you to stand before his people with a rebellious Jezebel Vashti spirit because you will, you will transfer that rebellion into other marriages. I don't know who you are, never met you. There are a lot of women that's like this. Again, I'm not talking about, I gave disclaimers in the beginning, but you're disrespectful. Some of you have church, some of you have ministries, some of you, you have uh, groups, you may have things in home, you may be on YouTube, you may be on Periscope, but you are absolutely nasty to your husbands absolutely nasty to the patient and kind man that God has given to you because you feel that you are called and because you are called as a matter of fact I hear you saying God is my husband first <laughs> but here's the problem you're not even submitted to Christ so no he's not your husband because you're not submitting to his words that's written in this word. So where do you truly belong? Who are you really following? The Lord is calling you to repent. Repent quickly. Or he's going to remove your candlestick. Quickly. Your, your anointing is not yours. It is mine. I hear the Lord saying. And he will turn everything around. He will humble you. Because some of you are even fanning the flames of affairs. And God is going to bring exposure and shame. And you know who's going to be there to protect you and cover you? The strength of your husband. Be careful. You're out there without your covering. Be careful how you are stepping into arenas into into places that does not belong to you be careful how you're stepping into other women's uh arena with their husbands because there's women who will gut you literally there are men that you think you're in the same arena with them because you're entering in to this area with men that your husband has been equipped with the strength to cover and protect you, but you're going in here with them and you're going to find yourself falling into a scandal. You're going to find yourself compromising yourself. Some of you, you already done it. 
And what happens is once a man has had you in a way that is not of God, what he desires, just like what Tamar's brother did to her, it was wrong. He, this man will desire you so much that when you finally give in to him, he'll turn around and will be, he will, he'll hate you. He will despise you because you represent something he did wrong. So now he will be starting to treat, he will start treating you a certain way and turn people against you. And in some cases, depending because you start to get a little out of control, he will begin to use his force against you. And you cannot contend with that. God is saying you need to repent quickly. Repent quickly and go through the process of healing in your own home. You are not fit to speak my word, I hear the Lord saying. You are not fit to speak my word, to exhort, to preach, to teach, because you are in rebellion at home. This is the word of the Lord today, my brothers and sisters. Pray for those it applies to, and I pray whoever hears it that you will, you will turn to the Lord.